What do you do when the prospect says, I need to talk to my spouse or my business partner? Now, here's something you have to realize. When your prospect says, I need to talk to my spouse or business partner, it's for one or two reasons. Reason number one is you haven't pulled out enough emotion from the questions you've asked to help them see the problems clearly in their mind that they have and for them to feel urgency to solve those to get where they're wanting to go. So because of that, they are just saying that to get rid of you. Now, this is all on us as a salesperson because our lack of questioning skills. Now, the second reason is that it's just logistical. The spouse or let's say the business partner is interested, but they just discuss things when they make major purchases. Now, if it's more of a B2B complex selling environment, it's not talking to the spouse, it's talking to the other owners or other decision makers in the company. So it's a bit different, which I will show you towards the end of the video. Based on how the call went from their tonality, body language, and the answers to your questions will tell you which of these they're gonna fall into. Now, no matter what, which one they fall into, your original reaction can be very simple, very similar. You simply first want to acknowledge what they said, then you set up a time the next day, ideally, or day after to talk again to either them or ideally both of them. Here's how it might look. Now, I'm gonna give you a generic example so you can plug in your industry, and then I'm gonna show you how it looks in a few other industries so you can see how the structure works. Once again, this works for any product, service, or industry. It doesn't matter what you sell. Okay, so I'm gonna role play with myself. Prospect says, this sounds good, but I just need to talk to my spouse. We always make these decisions together as a family. You're gonna say, yeah, that's not a problem. Um, how does your spouse feel about you? Blank. Repeat back what they said they wanted. Prospect says, oh, I, you know, I think they'd want me to do this, but I, you know, I just need to run it by them first. You say, yeah, okay, well, hold on though. What are you gonna do if you go to them and they don't want you to get the funding so that you can, and you repeat back the benefit of what they said they wanted. Funding, budget, money, depending on what you sell. Prospect says, yeah, I understand. I'm just not sure what they're gonna say about this. You say, well, how will you blank, repeat back what they said they wanted if they don't let you then, okay? Prospect says, ah, yeah, I know, I know, I know I need to do something about this. Now, let's stop there. At this point, you usually can just resolve the concern they have here and make the sale. But if you still can't do that here, then you book a second call. Now, once again, it depends on what you sell, what industry you're in is how we're gonna language that. Salesperson says, I understand. Uh, I guess what's your time frame on getting back with me today or tomorrow just to see if I'd be available for you? They're gonna answer and they're gonna say something like this. Well, I could call you back in the next few days, I guess. Don't take that at face value. They're not gonna call you back. You say this. Well, what I can do if it helps is if you have your calendar handy, I can pull up mine. That way you can book a specific time with me in the next day or so so you don't have to chase me down and vice versa. Would that be appropriate? Notice I say, so you don't have to chase me down and vice versa. This positions you once again as the expert who's busy helping a lot of other clients solve their problems so it's attractive to your prospects. Makes you look as like you know what you're doing. Never, never say you're gonna be available late at night or on the weekends when they ask for that. It makes you look desperate. And when you look desperate, you're not viewed by them as the authority. You're not viewed as them as a trusted expert. You're viewed as just another salesperson trying to sell you something. So they push you off to the corner and they commoditize you. Now, let's do this. Let me show you what it looks like once you throw in a specific industry. In this example, let's say that you sell lead services to companies, maybe small business owners. Now, if you sell B2B, talking to business owners, it's the same structure, depending on the accounts that you're selling to. Prospect might say something like this. You know, this sounds good, but I, I really need to speak to my business partner to see what they think. You just agree. You say this. Yeah, that's not a problem. Um, I guess, how does your business partner feel about you guys getting a higher, more qualified lead to your sales team so that they can make more sales? Notice how I'm plugging in what they said they wanted, which was a higher quality lead, and I tie in the result of that better lead, which is to what? Make more sales. Remember, people don't buy your thing. They don't buy the thing. They buy the results of that thing. They buy the results of your products or service. Prospect says, well, yeah, I mean, I think they'd want better leads for sure. I mean, 
who wouldn't want better leads, Jeremy? You say, well, hold on though. What are you gonna do if you go to them and they don't want you to put in the extra funding to get the higher quality leads and your sales keep going down like you've mentioned the next three, six or even 12 months or now? Say that with a skeptical tone. That's a consequence question that we're asking to get the prospect to realize what would happen if they don't do anything. Prospect's gonna come back and say, oh yeah, I mean, we're gonna have to do something for sure, otherwise we could go under with that type of result for sure. Salesperson says, okay, um, well, would it help you if we set up a call with your business partner and you to discuss how we might be able to solve that problem for you? Now, especially if you have a, if they have a business partner or their other decision makers, it's more of a B2B environment. Realize this, the average company has 6.8 decision makers, regular sized companies. Then you'd want those other decision maker or makers on the next call. Prospect might say, yeah, that might actually help me. Then you're gonna set up another call like I taught you a few minutes before. Now remember, if you're selling B2B, more than likely you're gonna set up another call to talk with the other decision makers. If you're selling lower value products or service, more B2C, a lot of the times you can help them overcome the concern in the first call and actually close them. Okay, we just went over. What do you do when the prospect says, I wanna to talk to my spouse or business partner? And that is your tip for the day.